and welcome mindsetters to this session of Learn Extra, looking at grade 11 science. I hope you guys are ready. You've got your pens and pads out and you're going to make some notes. I've got Bruce in with me, so I hope your mindsetters are ready for today's session. What are we doing today, Bruce? Ty, what we're doing today is we're going to be continu continuing to look at the lithosphere, or lithosphere as they sometimes want to pronounce it. We're going to be having a look at the phosphate industry. Um, we're going to be looking at the minerals that contain phosphates and where phosphates are so important to us. And I'm probably going to have, if time allows, at the end of uh, the show to have a look a little bit at coal and the importance of coal in our lives, especially as an right. energy resource. All right. Okay. So on that note, well, you no, make I'll your way across the board. Right. No, definitely. Mindset is, you know the drill by now. Get on the page, www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Get chatting to me. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Today, you guys need to make sure that you post, 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 because you guys know the drill. Awesome prizes today. You've got this awesome Casio calculator and this labeler, so make sure that you guys get on the page and talk to us. Make sure that if you've got any questions, if you lost any, if you need help, post those questions so we can help you out. But on that note, I just want to say shout out to Liberty. Thank you for sponsoring the show and take it away, Bruce. Right, Ty, thanks very much. And guys, welcome to the show. Um, we, as I said earlier in the introduction, we're going to be carrying on with the lithosphere and having a look at some of the important elements and important minerals that are found in the Earth's crust. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we've looked at gold. Um, last week, we looked at iron. I think Tracy did the show where she looked at iron with you guys. And what I'm going to be having a look at today is another important mineral that we're able to get out of the Earth's crust, and that's namely the phosphates. And we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the phosphates, where they come from, um, how we use phosphates, the importance of phosphates uh, in our lives, and also uh, having a look at some of the disadvantages, funnily enough, that phosphates are going, to, uh, are going to present to us. And if time allows, and I'm sure we're going to have a little bit of time today, I'm going to make an introduction to looking at energy resources that we get from the actual Earth itself. Where the lithosphere, not only are we able to get minerals um, that we are able to extract and we can use for various, uh, various purposes, but also we can extract stuff from the Earth's crust that we can use as an energy source. And coal is one of the most obvious ones, and South Africa is a country country that is blessed with quite a lot of coal. In fact, we are the sixth largest coal mining country in the world, and we have a look at where we actually um, use it to uh, fire up our power stations and produce our electricity that ESCOM uses. However, I think we're all aware of some of the big problems that coal does present in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So what I thought I'd do is take us to this fairly short section on phosphates, and then we can open up a, a nice discussion. I've asked Ty to, to feed me as many questions as, uh, as he can, so you guys can get onto the Facebook page, and we can talk about phosphates, and we can talk about the, the phosphate industry as such. But guys, if we have a look at the board here, let's just have a look at the basic introduction of what we talk about when we, when, we, well, when we speak about the phosphates. And what is a phosphate? Well, a phosphate is the salt of phosphoric acid. And here over here, guys, is the chemical formula for, let me just get the pen up, is the chemical formula of phosphoric acid. Now, if we have a look at phosphoric acid, phosphoric acid contains the phosphate group. And it's in this group that we find the phosphates naturally occurring. And that phosphate group is written as the PO4 3 minus group. That is known as the phosphate radical or the phosphate ion. It's a compound or complex ion. And what it does is that it naturally represents um, the element of phosphorus. So, in other words, when we deal with phosphorus, we don't, we aren't able. <coughs> excuse me, to extract phosphorus directly out of the ground. Okay, we can only extract it in the form of a phosphate, and therefore the mineral, which we're going to have a look at a bit later, the mineral that comes out of the ground contains the phosphate, and then we use that to create phosphates, which represents the element of phosphorus, which is very important to us. Now, where do we find phosphates? Well, we can say phosphates are referred to the rock or ore that contain the phosphate ions. Okay, so what ore, or should I say what mineral, is going to now con contain, is going to contain the actual phosphates itself? Well, that mineral is a substance known as phosphorite. I'll just write it up here. Okay, it's called phosphorite. 
And it is something that we mine naturally in South Africa. We actually mine it up in Palaboa. Um, there's a big uh, mining company there called Foscore, and we are able to get phos phosphorite out of the ground and extract the phosphates. Just a quick reminder, we've spoken about the, uh, talking about the ore, or the rock, and what do we mean by the ore itself? Well, ore is the volume of rock which contains the mineral which makes it valuable for mining. So what the geologists are able to do is that they're able to um, identify the actual rock that contains the phosphorite, which has got the phosphates, and therefore they're able to mine it, and that becomes the ore, which they then are able to crush the rock up and extract the phosphates out. Okay. Now, what else have we got here? It's important. Well, uh, there we got it. I've put it over here for you guys. The chemical formula for the phosphate iron. Sorry, it's PO4-3-. I'll write it again there. It's a slight typing error. It's PO4-3-. minus. So please don't worry about that two minus over, that was a typing error. Okay, now, as I said, we mine phosphates up in Palaboa. Let's have a little look at the, at, the, uh, at the mining of these phosphates. And the important thing is, is where do we find these phosphates? Okay, well, we said it's in this, um, this mineral called phosphorite, but where, what type of rock contains phosphorite? And the important thing is that it's found in beds of sedimentary rock. Okay, a sedimentary rock, which have been quarried, which are quarried now to extract this ore. Now, what do I mean by a sedimentary rock? Well, sedimentary rocks are types of rock that are formed by the deposition of material at the Earth's surface and within bodies of water. So what you find is that sedimentary rocks are basically sediments where we've got, when the Earth was covered with majority of water, that what happened now is that your uh, soils and stuff basically sank to the bottom and you had the, the floor, the base, started to build up layer upon layer of sediment and when the water eventually ran away, okay, as the earth was, was, was being, um, being formed, as the earth evolved, what happened is those uh, sediment layers became hard, they became rocks and therefore they're called sedimentary rocks. And it was found that this phosphorite, which contains the phosphates, was very much found close to the surface in the sedimentary type of rock. And I've got some examples here of uh, sedimentary rock, namely limestone and a substance called claystone. Okay, limestone and claystone are examples of sedimentary rocks. Now, what I've also got here is just a little picture that I've managed to embed just to show you what a sedimentary rock actually looks like. And remember what I said? They were formed underwater, okay, when the sediments, the soils, basically uh, filtered out of the, of the water and were layered. And as the water dis uh, disappeared, as, as uh, they were exposed, they became hard. And you can see now in this, in this photograph, the layers of sediment piled one on top of each other. And that's how we are able to identify a sedimentary rock very close to the Earth's surface. So the one thing about phosphate mining, it's not like gold mining, where you have to go down deep uh, in certain areas to follow a, uh, a, a sort of uh, a rock formation containing gold. Um, the, phos the phosphates are generally found very close to the surface, which makes mining very, very easy. And therefore the question now comes out, what type of mining do we expect to, to have? Well, it's certainly not going to be shaft mining because that now goes nice and deep. So it's probably going to be open, open pit mining or quarry mining, okay, where they're able to mine straight off the surface of the earth, of the earth crust itself. Right. Now, there's a little bit of story about uh, um, the phosphate mining in South Africa. And it basically says that in South Africa, the main phosphate producer is at the Palabora Alkaline Igneous Complex, which is known as Foscor, uh, which is an open pit mine, and here they, and they mine the mineral phosphorite, which contains the phosphates. Okay, so Palabora is on the map. Basically, well, it's also got other things. It's, it also mines copper, but it's also a great area to find phosphorite, which contains our phosphates. Okay, now, what I've got here is a picture of the mine itself. I managed to find a quite a nice picture of what it looks like. Um, they mine three million tons of ore each year at that mine. Three million tons 
of ore each year. That, guys, is a pretty significant amount of ore. So you can see now that phosphate is pretty abundant in the Earth's surface, especially in that area. And if you have a look at the picture, you can see now how this, here's this open pit over here, and you can follow, there we can follow over here, whoops, this thing's moving around, but if we put this there, you can see that road that goes down. Let's just move this up a little bit so we can just see it again. There we go. Okay, you can see now all the tracks. There are the tracks where the, where the uh, actual mining trucks basically move. And you can see now that they've basically come down in layers. And as they get deeper and deeper, so the, the path, the roads get, get deeper and deeper into the, uh, into the open pit mine. And they're able to load these massive trucks with, uh, with ore. And then they're driven out and they're taken to the crushes and the phosphate is extracted from there. So it's a huge open pit mine that they have up in, uh, in Palaboa. Okay. Now, let's have a look at a little bit of the chemistry that's associated with it. And what I've got here under the picture, it says the ore is crushed to powder and treated with sulfuric acid to form what is known as a superphosphate. Okay, so guys, here now, we must just have a look at some of the basic chemistry associated with extracting it. So what do we need? Well, we need sulfuric acid, and we're going to need quite a lot of it. And here is the chemical reaction. Now, if you have a look at this rather complicated looking chemical formula. That is basically the formula where we find the, of, of the mineral that, that it's phosphorite that contains the phosphate. And you can see now it's a calcium phosphate fluoride complex. And I'm not even going to try and draw this out for you. Don't worry, you're not going to be asked to, to draw it out or anything like that. But there you can see now that we have got our phosphate which is locked inside the actual uh, inside the mineral itself. There's the sulfuric acid to be treated with. Okay, we add a little bit of water, and what do we get out of it? Well, here we get this substance over there, okay, which is a calcium hydrogen phosphate water complex, and this now is known as our superphosphate. Okay, that's our superphosphate. Now, where do we use this? Why do we go to the such great lengths to get phosphates out of the ground and convert them into superphosphates? Well, superphosphates provide phosphorus, which is an essential uh, growing element for our agricultural system. Plants, crops, you name it. Phosphates are hugely important in terms of the nutrition of, um, of, 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 of the healthy growth and sustainable growth of our crops and things like that. So us, being an agricultural country, we have to make sure that we are producing large amounts of food for the population. We have to make sure that the plants that the crops grow properly, and phosphorus is important, and the phosphate is the essential part there. And that's where the superphosphate is going to be having a look at. So, guys, very extensively used in the fertilizer industry. Now, in my next slide, and I think I'm going to ask Ty if we've got a few questions up until now, um, I'm going to be talking about the agriculture industry and how we actually apply our phosphates, looking at the advantages, but there's also some rather big disadvantages that we must take note of as well. Ty, are there any questions that have come in at this stage? So far, I'm scanning the page, not quite as yet, um, but they are saying that it's, it's pretty informative, so okay. that's a good thing. Yeah, w the one thing, guys, is that in, in your schools, I'm not too sure how many schools are still uh, are actually doing this and w or whether they make this an optional section or not, but if you are doing it, guys, just make sure that you, make you get your notes down Okay, that you just make the, just highlight the bit of the problems uh, that you might have, and then as we go through the lesson, hopefully um, you'll be able to send through, send us through a couple of uh, messages on our Facebook, and we can be able to 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 have a quick look at it. Okay, well let's have a look then quickly, and we'll make make a start on having a look at uh, the advantages and disadvantages of phosphorus, okay, or phosphates, shall I rather say, and that, and we're going to talk specifically and target our fertilizer industry. Okay, so as I've mentioned already, phosphates are used as a key component in the fertilizer industry. Okay, a quick shout out. What are the other components that are important in the fertilizer industry? Okay, and hopefully you guys might have come across, the, uh, come across this already in, at school. You need nitrogen, which comes in the form of nitrates, and you need potassium. So basically nitrogen, 
Phosphorus and potassium are your three essential components of fertilizer. They ensure the sustainability of healthy growth of crops that's uh, able to produce the food that's able to feed the nation. Okay, so there we go. A advantages, well, let's have a look at the advantages. Well, obviously the advantage is that there's extensive use in the, in the agricultural industry. Okay, if you go and look at a bag of fertilizer, okay, if you pop off to uh, the local market and you, f and you look for a bag of fertilizer, you will see on that bag of fertilizer, they will mention specifically the inclusion of phosphorus or phosphates in the actual fertilizer itself. So it is absolutely hugely important. Okay, however, and this is where we have to now maybe sit up and take some notes. However, phosphates can become a problem, okay? And this is due to the problem of what we call overuse. All right, sometimes farmers get carried away and they over-fertilize their the, the, the land. They think that sometimes if the more fertilizer they add, the bigger the crops are going to grow, the faster the crops are going to grow, they're going to make more money and things like that. Guys, it doesn't work like that. Fertilizer, you add fertilizer to the soil in a very specific way to keep the nutritional balance right because the plants can't take every piece of phosphorus or, or nitrogen or potassium that comes up, that's, uh, well, that's, presented to, that's presented to the soil. So a lot of the stuff becomes unused and we have this over-fertilization and once we have this over-fertilization, it produces a very serious environmental problem. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break, okay, and then I'm going to come back and chat to you guys about that environmental problem. And hopefully, while we're having a short break, you guys will be able to work out what that environmental problem is, and that should make it a little bit easier. So, Tart, I think so we can take a quick break, and then All we right. can... So on that note, mindsetters, I hope you make sure that you come back and stay tuned, because we're going to take a short <coughs> little break. We'll make sure you guys come back and full of <coughs> questions. But for now, we'll see you after this break.